In this lab, I'm going to show you how to do some simple single cell RNA sequencing data analysis, including differential expression and the cell clustering. Uh, let's first do differential expression. Uh, if you open the R file, the scrnaseq.r, so the, f the first step is to, to practice differential expression using MAST. MAST uh, is a software designed for doing differential expression in R for single cell RNA seq. So we'll first uh, load in the a pre saved file called de.rda. So I obtain this data from, uh, it's a public data set, it's from GEO under this accession number. So the data is used to compare two types of uh, embryonic stem cells, H1 and H9. So if it, we just load it in and look at the column names. Okay, so basically uh, each one has uh, about 20,000 rows. Each row is a gene and then 90 something columns. Each column is a cell, it's a single cell. Now let's run MAST. So I first need to load in MAST. Then I need to combine the count matrices from these two conditions and make a dummy design vector. Okay, so I, I can do this. So the design looks like this is just a, a vector of indicating the experimental conditions, their H1 and H9. Then I make the data frames for the cells and the gene names. This seems the C data and the F data are used uh, in creating some object later on required for MAST. Okay, I just create two data frames. Uh, now I, I need to compute the size factor. So basically for this column, I just take the, the column sums and create a size factor from there. Okay, then I compute the, the, the TPM value. So basically the transcript per million. So basically use the size factor is the column sums divided by a million. Then this line is used to normalize the data. Basically for each column, I divided the size factors, the plus one and take a log. So this is the log TPM plus one values. And the uh, mast use this value as input. Then from matrix, I want to I create this single cell assay object, which is a object internally defined by mast, called SCA. Okay, there's some warning messages, so you, you can ignore this, because this is kind of a fake data, no primary ID, but that's, that's okay. Mast uh, require you to threshold the matrix, so basically, for each value, uh, you, you you compute or you call it whether the its presence or absence, whether the expression is is there or not. Okay, so basically, remember in the single cell gene expression is a lot it's a little more complicated than bulk. So the gene expression has two phases. The first one is on and off. You could have the genes completely off, right? But then when the gene is on, uh, you could have a uh, quantitative differences to the level of the expression. So this line basically here, threshold scRNA count matrix is basically used to, uh, to to determine whether the genes are on and off for all the genes in all the cells. So I just run this. There's some some parameters you have to read the manuals to to figure out what these are. Okay, so it's use a adaptive thresholding uh, algorithm. Okay, so now I have my this SCA ready. So uh, SCA is the object. So it's a single cell assay. This is, here's the dimension. Basically, it's this many, 19,000 genes, 183 cells. There, then just some other information, okay? Then I can create a model. So it's basically the cell type and the CN genes on. So there's a number of genes on, okay? So you have to include this one. And, but I want to tell, I, I want to test the cell types. Basically, I want to, compare H1 and H9. Then ZRM is the main function. Uh, use this function to do differential expression test. Uh, MAST is pretty slow, so if you do the test for the whole data set, it takes maybe 10 minutes. So to save time, I only test the first 100 genes. Okay, so basically this fits the uh, zero inflated Poisson model. Then I can do a likelihood ratio test. 
So here's my feeding result. Here's the term to test. This is cell type. So it's a likelihood ratio test. So it's basically fit it a, a reduced model. So basically, it's drop the cell type from your model and refit the model, and then do a likelihood ratio test. So here's the result. This IRT is a three-dimensional array. So the third dimension are the p-values. If you take a look, you have three columns here. So for each gene, each row is a gene, is the gene names. Then you have the p-values for the continuous p-value is basically to compare whether, the quanti whether there's quantitative change when the genes are on. And the discrete p-values, whether the proportion uh, of gene turning on or off are the same in two, two, two conditions. And there's a hurdle p-value, basically a combination of these two. I want to introduce another soft software called SC2P. So it's actually developed by, developed by me and my colleagues. Uh, we have the software on GitHub, so we have to install from GitHub, uh, but we are in the process of uh, submitting it to Bio Conductor, so it should be on Bio Conductor very soon. But if you, after installation, you load it in. Then uh, in the beginning, the steps are very similar to using MAST. So you need to have your, uh, your, your count matrix, you create a design, basically tell the cell names. Then you create something called expression set, which is uh, an object defined by, by bioconductor in biobasis. Okay, so I, I run this. You have an expression set. You have this many features, so basically 19,000 genes, 183 samples, that means 183 cells, and so on. So the first uh, step is to estimate the phase. So this is the very similar to the thresholding step in MAST, okay? But we call it phase. Again, I, I, I only run uh, like the first 1,000 genes to, to make it a little faster. Okay. Then after estimating the phase, I can do a two-phase dif differential expression test. So basically test mm -hmm. the Burst the frequencies and the burst the strengths. Okay, so there are two things to test. Remember in signal cell analysis, the first one is whether the turning on and off percentage are the same. And the second one is conditional on the genes are on on whether the quantitative uh, expression levels are different. Okay, so you can take a look at the result. So basically, you have a lot of information here: the p-value for the first phase, for the second phase. Uh, no, these are the turning on percent, the percentage of genes are on. So the coefficient, the p-values here, the phase one p-value, phase two p-value, some confidence intervals and the log flow changes. So we can visualize the genes. So this is a top phase one DE gene. So basically, if you look at here, phase one means the percentage of turning on. So here, this shows in H1, 40% of the genes are off, so 60% are on, okay? But in H9, 91% of the genes are off, okay? So there's a huge difference in the percentage of genes being expressed, okay? So we call this the phase one gene, phase one DE gene. So you look at phase two. So phase two means when the genes are on, if they are, there are quantitative change. So these are the top phase two genes. So you can see the percentage of turning on are pretty similar. But when they're on, the level of expression are kind of different. So this is in the log scale. This is log, log in log scale the expression is 10. This is like about 11. So it's twice as big as this, basically. So uh, that's all about differential expression. Uh, let's try some cell clustering and differential expression tests using Monaco. Monaco is a software, again, it's a software, uh, pretty popular, it's on Bioconductor. So uh, I will first load in the Monaco library and uh, uh, an example data set come with Monaco, it's the HSMM, HSMM data set. And let's load them in. Take a look at the, and then load in this data. Those are the example data distributed with uh, Monaco. It's actually distributed with this package, but it's uh, also accompanied with, with Monaco. Let's take a look at the data. This is the expression matrix. So basically, these are the 
each row is a gene, each column is a cell. Okay, so these are the, the, the TPM value. Here are the sample sample sheet. So basically for each uh, each cell, what are they? So this is the cell names. For each cell is a row. Here are the gene names, gene annotations for each gene. Here are the ensemble number, ensemble accession number, the gene names, and, and so on. Next, uh, you want to create the cell data set object. Okay, you have a PD and FD. So basically annotating the cells and the genes. You create this data set. Then you estimate the size factors and dispersions. So these are kind of the known addition steps. That's so it says it's removing some outlier genes. Uh, then you detect genes. This is a filtering step so that you can select some genes for the downstream clustering. Remember, when you do clustering, you cannot clustering based on all the genes. You want to select some informative genes for clustering. So this is a step to detect the genes. And then you define the, the express the genes. So there's some criteria like number of cells expressed greater than 50 and so on. Now, once you select the genes, we can do a pseudo time estimation. Okay. So the pseudo time is basically uh, it's used for when you study the some, for example, the time course data or the, to study the progression of some diseases or development. You have this bunch of cells, they can be put into a, a time trajectory. So we can run this a few lines. Okay. Then you use this command, basically set ordering filters. So basically these are the genes used, the marker genes you use for estimating the pseudo time. Then do a dimension reduction, then order the cells. So here's a pseudo time projection. Okay, so these are the kind of the PC plot. So basically, it, it assumes that the time goes like this. Then there's some little branches. Then you can show uh, the profile for particular genes under this pseudo, pseudo time. You can see this one gene CDK1. So all the pseudo time just goes like going down. This is another gene that goes up. This is another gene goes up. So this is the pseudo time estimation is basically just to uh, you know follow these steps you set a filter you reduce dimension then you order cells so basically these three commands are the most important ones y you can also do differential expression uh, in monocle monocle use a GAN model it's a general general additive model so here i'm selecting a few genes to do differential expression because the the, the de test in monocle is very very slow for whatever reason so i'm only doing DE for these genes. So the function is called differential gene test. You specify the data. Here the data, I'm only taking the data for these few genes. Uh, then my full model is media. So basically testing the differences between media. See, it's kind of slow in here. For only testing a handful of genes, it takes uh, some time. If you, I tried to run this on the whole data set, it just takes forever. If you look at the results, here are the results. So the p-values, q-values, and some other stuff. So the DE test in Monaco is different from MAST or ST2P. It only tests the, the average expression differences. It doesn't test the, the differential frequency of on and off. Now you can visualize the data from a couple of genes the DE data. Okay, so, so here are these this two, two genes. You can see this is one gene between two different media, DM and GM. You can see the this is in DM, this is in GM. This is another gene. You can see the they tested the difference in the average expression values. Okay, that's it.